timber frame houses are are usually known for being so warm, you mm. know, and I live in a timber frame house. Dave myself. the Builder on KFM with Premier Timber Frame Homes, your expert guide to self-built homes. Premier Timber Frame Homes, Dalai. Yeah, week three of our building slot with Dave the Builder from Premier Timber Frame Homes. Dave, good to see you again and uh, welcome back into studio. Last week we touched on planning permission and planning applications part one with our made up couple, John and Mary, and we left it at where they had just put in their submission and their application for planning permission. So what we're doing this week then is we're going to take it through the different outcomes that they might face planning permission being refused or planning permission being uh, granted. A couple of messages, though, that came into us at the end of the show last week, and I know you've been getting messages during the week as well that we might touch on. First of all, uh, Lucy in Johnstown Bridge wanted to know, is there a limit on the number of times that a person can actually apply for planning permission? Or if they get refused, can they just do up an application and apply again? Yes, so I I don't think that there's a a limit. Um, I've seen people go for planning permission five or six times and um, if you're persistent enough and you have a good architect behind you, 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 at the end of it you you will get planning permission, you know, and I I suppose it's not guaranteed, but... um, so that's I'm not aware if there's a, a complete limit, but I I would advise anybody if you're getting refused three or four times, there's obviously something there, and I've seen sometimes that you might even have to change architect, mm-hmm. you know. So it, it's just each person on 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 each different scenario would you know you'd have to kind of have a look at it. Okay. Similarly, Christina in Manute says if somebody needs planning permission, how large and how high can they build at the back of a semi-detached house in a housing estate? So is it a case of well, it depends on what the houses are like around you before you apply for the planning permission? Yes. So if you're trying to do something at the back of a house in a housing estate, you would definitely be restricted. So off the top of my head, I think it's 13 foot. You have to be below 13 foot. And off the top of my head, I think it's you're only allowed to build about 25 square metres out the back. So that's the size that she'd have to go for. Right, so in a, essentially then, if you're surrounded by bungalows, don't go building a three-storey mansion or applying for that because you won't get it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right, okay, let's take it through then and keep those messages coming into us, 0833 97 97 97. John and Mary applying for planning permission for a, a timber frame home. They have been refused. Let's say they've been refused, first of all. What are their options then and where can they go from there? So, let's say, for instance, they were refused on... They they could be refused on a number of different things. One of the things that um, you can get refused on is um, ribbon development. So, if there's too many houses in a certain... uh, in a kilometre of of roadway, let's say, and they're, tr- they're trying to stop that in rural areas. And that's a hard one to overcome because it's kind of set in stone. So let's say that they were refused on something simple like they need um, more trees, to, to uh, more native trees around the house and maybe move the septic tank to the opposite side of the site. Mm-hmm. That's something that might happen, you know. So it, that would mean you'd go back to your architect and you might have to get a kind of like a heart a horticulturist to do up a, a plan of where you're going to put the native trees around the house and then you'd get uh, the architect to change the sewerage system from right to left or some, something along them lines and then you would technically resubmit the plans to Kildare County Council and hope for the best right, <laughs> really you okay. know how long can it take? It is, well, it, it can be a lengthy process, but, you know, I think we mentioned this last week, people might get it in the, in the space of five or six months, or it could take a couple of years before they get a response. So it really depends. It really does depend. Some people get it in their first time, but it is rare. Most people have to go a minimum of a second time to get to get the planning, and I have seen people, as I said, going up to f- five times. But most of the time, you'll get it on the second time from what we see in uh, from dealing with people. Um, I suppose usually what happens is. 
the planning authority might request further information and you would have to go and get the further information. And sometimes it could be personal information from the person who's about to build the house, you know. Yeah, because really you'd want to be a genius if you were going to put in your application first time round and get it absolutely bang on and meet all the, the criteria. So as you're saying, usually you won't get it first time round. You might get it second time round. John and Mary then applied for planning permission and they've now been granted planning permission. Great news. What happens now? Do you just go out the back and start building immediately? So, uh, no, you don't go out the back and start building immediately. Uh, The first thing you do is you you have to wait a mandatory of 30 days and that gives um, uh, people a chance that they can still put in a, 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 what do you call it, a... Uh, not a complaint, but something like that. Um, an objection. It, an objection, it? an objection, sorry, that's the word I was thinking. You can still put in an objection within the 30 days. After that, once you get by that period, you can then chat to your architect about putting through a commencement notice. So within the commencement notice, you would have a provisional BER cert, so that's a building energy rating. You would have a set of construction drawings, and you'd uh, outline who your assigned uh, certifier is going to be. So someone who's going to be signing off on your build throughout. And if you're going to use a company, let's say like ourselves, you would mention that Premier Timberframe Homes is going to be building the house, and we would also be... um, putting through a lot of our own general arrangement plans and construction drawings for the project. So that's kind of the next step that you, you, you'd be going ahead with, you know. Right. Uh, you, you definitely need to be getting at that stage. If your architect is going to be signing off on the whole process, that's brilliant. But you're going to need an engineer that a structural engineer that's going to be uh, able to liaise with you and someone that you can talk to, you know, because we're hearing Uh, a lot that people are finding it hard to get structural engineers they're finding it hard to get engineers to sign off on the projects and when they do find them the the, the engineers are that busy you can't get them on the phone you can't get them by email so there is a a shortage there you know and once those 30 days have elapsed and all that has been sorted can building then start commencing or certainly works or plans start commencing yeah so once the once the once the um commencement notice goes in um you, your architect will be able to let you know thereafter when you're able to start digging digging holes, basically. Let's say then John and Mary's neighbour, Mick, is a bit of a devil, right? And Mick objects to this completely. He doesn't want the house overlooking his back garden and puts in an objection. What happens there? Does it get a bit more complicated then? It does get a bit more complicated then, um, especially if it's a next-door neighbour. But they do have to have a plausible case. You know, it has to be directly impacting their home you know if it's blocking light in their living room window which is probably going to be rare enough unless it's you're building a two story beside a single story but it has to be a plausible case and um that can be then brought to the the proper authorities and you know kind of argued with okay there was another message that we got in this was from uh, Sean in Dunlavin and he wants to know when you are building your own home and if it's a, a timber frame home or not are there any grants available support available that he could avail of you know because you think of if you're buying a house you get the help to buy you can get you know the first home scheme etc etc do those still apply for self-built homes as far as i'm aware and i don't know the mechanics of it and um, but i'm as far as i'm aware they do still apply to building your own home but I, as i say i would just cross that cross check that with your with your local architect right and see if you're avail uh, can avail of any of those supports or grants out there there was another message and i know someone contacted you on this uh, during the week which was in relation to the irish climate and building timber frame homes does it take longer to build them will they last in the irish climate and if you're out building in the rain will the timber get damaged so uh, no, if we're building in the rain, the timber doesn't get damaged. Now, it is good. We're building our timber frame homes in a factory where it's controlled environment and they're not getting wet and they go to site wrapped up. And unfortunately, if you get a bad week, like we don't like erecting in the rain, of course, but timber, you know, it's a, if you can imagine it, it's after been out in the rain for the last 80 or 90 years growing and obviously you still have to keep uh, it right. But if it gets a couple of weeks of rain, it's not going to 
do anything to it, you know. But you would like to get the house sealed up as soon as possible, you know. And just on the uh, the Irish climate, now there is, and I don't want to sound like the government, but there is a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, misinformation right. about timber frame houses in Ireland, right? Timber frame houses will last as long as a block house. Once you you still do your your um, yearly, you know, once they're kept dry and once they're kept ventilated. If you can imagine, timber frame construction is on half of every house, nearly every house in Ireland. Half of every house has a timber framed roof. And people forget this. And it's the most exposed, if you think about it. Mm. So you have your, your rain and your wind and your sun coming from above and that's where your roof is. Like, And I always ask people, how long will a, a roof last in Ireland? You yeah. know, the answer is a very, very long time once the water doesn't get in, of course. So if you have, you know, once you keep your slates and your tiles right. So timber frame construction has never been better as it, than it is today with the regulations that we have in place, you know. So, um, like, timber frame construction will last years. And I only seen up for sale, there was a house built 50 years ago in County Cork. It's now selling for just under a million euro. Uh-huh. And it's um, a big, it's a huge house. It's about 4,000 square foot selling down in Cork. And it was a timber framed house. And that's 50 years old. And to be honest with you, if you were looking at it, you'd think it was only built... You know, a year ago. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, Is it a case, do you think, that people don't actually understand what a timber frame home actually is and maybe they get confused with log cabins or they think that the house is made out of wood? But it's really only the frame that is timber and then it's block around it, isn't it? Absolutely. So th- th- this is a something that's come up quite a bit. People are getting confused with log cabins and timber frame housing. So a timber frame house... We'll, we'll never see the elements of the weather. So the timber frame structure is the main structure of the house and it is not exposed to rain, wind or sun. Whereas a log cabin is exposed to wind, rain and sun all year round. Mm. Now, what? It, okay, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a different topic, but they're not the same thing. And a timber frame house will last a very, very long time, whereas a log cabin, if it's not treated right, it mightn't last that long, you know, especially if you go to a a, a reputable log cabin company that has, you know, selling proper log cabins, yes, they last a long time, but still they wouldn't last outlive a, a timber frame house. There's a message in here and not sure if you'd answer it because it's fairly specific. It says, is it possible to convert a garage into living accommodation at the side of a three-bed semi is a, in a housing estate in North Kildare? Kind of like a granny flat, I suppose, that would be. But again, it's all dependent, I would imagine, Dave, and without even seeing the housing estate, you'd have to, to find out what the houses are around it. Yes, you would. And yes, I suppose the answer would be yes. It is definitely possible and it's something that goes on quite a bit and just um, I, I know uh, there's, a, there's a, a company a Kildare company actually um, and it's called grannyflat.ie and it's a lady builder her name is Lee Ryan and she uh, specialises in that whole area do you know mm. and um so she might be someone, she might be the person to give a call to, you know. Okay, grannyflat.ie is the uh, name of that website. And that kind of ties in then with a couple of other questions that we've got in, Dave, in relation to extensions. So if you're applying for a planning permission for an extension, is that the same kind of process as applying for a planning permission to build a house from scratch? It would be very similar. Um, so what I would say about extensions is... If you already have a house there, like the success rate for an extension is is very high. You mm. know, you're you're going to be talking about ninety five percent success rate. Uh, the only thing that might affect it is if you were going with a flamboyant design, maybe you know. So if you were keeping the design nice and simple and and in theme with the rest of the houses around, and um, but they are quite successful. The only thing that I do see from the different county councils around the country in regards to uh, extensions for houses is sometimes they might ask you to um, to um, update your. Uh, sewer system. Right. So put in a new percolation system and make sure because if you think, let's say, you have a house from the 80s or the 90s, they have quite an old sewer system and it wouldn't be up to date. And if you were adding bedrooms, you're going to be adding more people, which means the capacity is going to be, you know, more. So they would usually advise to update the sewer system on the 
Anne has uh, text in from Kilteal. She says, in 1984, we bought a timber frame home when we were living in the UK. It was the warmest house we've ever had. So obviously, they, when they moved back to Ireland, they were into, you know, your standard home. And we're saying when they were in the UK, that timber frame home was very, very warm. Yeah. So, you know, well insulated. And some people mightn't, uh, might not thought it would have been the opposite. Well, absolutely. Like, uh, timber frame houses are, n- are usually known for being so warm. You know, and I live in a timber frame house myself, and there's no comparison when I go over to me, let's say, my father's house. Yeah. Uh, you can you can see the difference hugely. But there you go. There's a lady that's after living in one for you know eighty four. What's that? Thirty years? Is yeah. it thirty years? And um, she's quite happy. And even when you think the like it, it, it's got way better since since thirty years ago. You know. Right. Just before we finish up, then, is there anything else that we need to touch on with planning permission, planning applications, or have we kind of gone through everything? I look at. I think we've nearly gone through everything. There, there is a small section. It's kind of got to do with alternative buildings. So you'll see a lot. Uh, around the country, especially with the housing crisis, people need somewhere to live and there's no rental accommodation and so on. So they're, they're building temporary structures out the back of their houses, you know. Now, you, you can build up to 25 square metres out the back of your, your, in your garden, you know. And there is, for somebody that does want to go ahead with something bigger, you can get temporary planning permission. So let's say, it would be maybe a 10-year cycle or a 15-year cycle. Mm. So I want to put something there for 10 years to get me out of a hole. Do you know what I mean? So th- you can also apply for temporary planning permission and you could buy in something like a modular unit, you know. And a- another local company, I'm going to uh, just... Uh, Pods for you in, in Nahamore, uh, they do th- that type of stuff and th- they do kind of a modular thing that they, they build... Uh, in in the workshop, a very high end building, and they're able to lift it in over the house with a crane. And ten years later, that building will be the very same way. And technically, you'll be able to sell that on. You know, they'll mm. the last the 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 the, the last a long time. You know. Okay, pods for you is the name of that company. And uh, in relation to the granny flats, then or the extensions, if you want to turn a garage into accommodation, grannyflats. dot ie. Uh, Dave, before we let you go, remind us then how people can get in touch with you at Premier Timberframe Homes. Yeah, so uh, the website is premiertimberframehomes.ie. Uh, the email address info at premiertimberframehomes.ie. And we're on TikTok, Dave Premier Timberframe Homes. That's the same with the Instagram. And the biggest one we have is the Facebook, which is Premier Timberframe Homes. Super stuff. We'll do it again at the same time next Thursday, just after 10 o'clock, our building slot for week four. Thanks indeed, Dave. Dave the Builder on KFM with Premier Timberframe Homes, your expert guide to self-built homes. Premier Timberframe Homes.ie.